Hi, I've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Tuesday, May 7th, and here we are looking at the Indian Ocean, which, believe it or not, may be providing some hints uh, for the long, really long range forecast of whether we might see some of the first potential for tropical storm development in the eastern Pacific or western Atlantic to start off the hurricane season near the end of this month and early June. Uh, we have a very interesting setup right now where we have the potential for twin tropical cyclones to develop, one in the northern hemisphere and one in the southern hemisphere. This is the equator right here and uh, this is a very cool somewhat rare event um, but it can happen in May sometimes where the monsoon trough starts lifting north in the Indian and Pacific basins and uh, can allow convection to straddle the equator and then you get these twin vortices that try to develop. And this is the only time that you will really see tropical lows in this close proximity actually aiding each other because of feeding off of each other's vorticity because they're actually spinning in opposite directions instead of in the same direction like when you get lows close to each other in the same hemisphere. So this is a very unique, very cool situation to watch but beyond that um, it has implications in the long-range forecast because these two cyclones are developing in response to a strong MJL upward motion, pu motion pulse that has developed in the eastern Indian Basin and as these twin cyclones develop they are going to be increasing the amount of convection in this region and uh, holding the pulse back here and really not letting the convection go anywhere until both of these cyclones recurve into the westerly jet stream in their respective hemispheres and when they do this especially if they do this in unison this whole convective batch is is going to be released and be able to progress eastward into the maritime continent and eventually into the Pacific Ocean. And this is what the GFS ensemble mean does. Here's the initialization showing a bunch of upward motion in the Indian Ocean as we expect with these storms here and the orange indicates sinking air. Um, and as we go out, what the GFS does is in two weeks' time, the GFS ensemble mean progresses all of the upward motion over into the eastern Pacific and southwestern Atlantic basins. And uh, what happens because of this is the ensemble mean 24-hour precipitation accumulation shows wet weather showing up at day 16 in the western Caribbean. And it is joined by the CMC, Canadian Ensemble Mean, which also shows wetter than normal weather showing up in the Caribbean. Now it's not entirely unexpected to see this, especially on the GFS at this time of year, because almost every year at this time, the GFS starts to show ghost lows um, coming out of the monsoon circulation and trying to develop tropical storms out of them in the Caribbean, and it's usually wrong um, because it tends to overdo the monsoon circulation early in the season. However, it starts to become more interesting when you see a pattern like this showing up on the ensemble mean, and especially if this becomes consistent and it starts to move up the timeline from hour 384 um, up to day 10 and then eventually to a week out, that's when you really have to pay attention. But the fact that it's starting to show up now now and is being joined by the Canadian indicates the strength of the MJO pulse that is being set up by these twin Indian cyclones and this upward motion pulse will get released once they recurve, travel across the, Atlanta, uh, the Pacific and perhaps eventually end up near the Atlantic and the Eastern Pacific where it can cause um, mischief in this region that these models are already starting to hint at on the ensemble means that may have to be watched. However, we have to be careful when looking at this because the GFS is usually a little bit too fast with the MJO, especially at this time of year. Here's the GFS ensemble forecast right now showing the initialization in phase two, which indicates the Indian Ocean. And uh, it comes all the way around to phase seven in two weeks' time. Phase seven corresponds to the Eastern Pacific. And uh, this is a little bit uh, fast, especially compared to the Euro. And usually the Euro does a little bit better at handling the MJO. The GFS is usually too fast and indeed the Euro is actually slower here showing in the same time two weeks out showing it in phase five which is barely getting it out of the maritime continent and into the western Pacific. So the European is a lot slower. I do believe it will handle this better as it usually does especially at this time of year. I think the GFS is a little over eager to get the MJO across the Pacific and uh, this progression will be slower. However I do think this will eventually come around as all of the models are hinting at into to phases 7 and 8 which correspond to the Eastern Pacific and Western Caribbean and we can start to get convection going off in those regions and at this time of year that convection will be firing far enough north that we might have to start worrying about tropical development. This is going to be near the end of May, the beginning of June, either Basin, Pacific or Atlantic could see a storm out of this to start off the hurricane season. 
and here's week four of the CFS uh, mean uh, sea level pressure anomaly showing the lowering of pressures in the Caribbean in response to the MJO that is coming across on this model as well and this is more in line with the timeline I'm thinking of this is week four ending June 4th and this is a lot slower than the GFS and I think more realistic the last few days of May and the first week of June make sense to be the target period when the MJO will likely be moving into this region and you can start to see some uh, some lows try to develop in here. You can see the CFS showing uh, trying to wind up a little bit of mischief in here and we'll see this is a very long range uh, speculation but these Indian Ocean twin cyclones are giving us an indication that we may not have had otherwise of something that can happen even three to four weeks down the road because we have this strong MJO pulse that we know is going to tend to come across the Pacific and if it does so uh, could cause uh, some things to happen in this area of the world tropically and this may be something to watch by the end of the month and into early June so we could have an early start to the season in either the Pacific or the Caribbean we'll have to see but it's something to keep an eye on now moving on to a discussion of the Atlantic hurricane season as a whole uh, remember this was the European uh, probability of mean sea level pressure anomalies that it was forecasting in, for May, June, and July this was April's forecast and you can see it had above normal pressures in the Atlantic for May, June, and July and it continued into the peak of the hurricane season in August and September and I still think this forecast is going to bust um, here's the beginning of May so far this is only the first five days but it has lower pressures where the European has high pressures in May and uh, then we also have the CFS forecast that's uh, for June showing up here showing uh, the normalized anomalies of 700 millibar height which is almost a proxy for mean sea level pressure showing a lot of below normal heights slash pressures in the tropical Atlantic right where the European has high pressure for May, June, and July and also notice all of the red showing up in the Pacific indicating higher pressures and this is a very La Nina-ish pattern showing up despite the neutral Enzo um, we actually have only the low pressure focused in the Atlantic and this is not hard to imagine why when you remember how warm the tropical Atlantic is the sea surface temperatures in here are warm relative to what is obviously a fairly neutral Pacific and then the Indian Ocean is actually not that warm right now as well so most of the heat is focused in the Atlantic at least relative to normal which means most of the upward motion will be focused there relative to normal or tend to be which will tend to lower pressures because the air is rising and spreading out um, in the upper atmosphere so it makes sense to have this forecast and if this shows up uh, this is really setting up for an active hurricane season as I've been saying and then notice also this ridge showing up over southeast Canada if this pattern lasts into August and September this is a big time landfall pattern with the ridge over southeast Canada developing uh, or directing storms in towards the coast rather than recurving out to sea and speaking of landfall patterns here's the temperature forecast from the CFS for the summer this is June July and August and uh, it's interesting I've been noticing lately the CFS has been developing a lot of colder than normal temperatures in the Canadian and Greenland Arctic and this is different than the last few years and this is a little concerning because if you get cool weather up here it means there's not very much blocking high pressure in the Arctic and if that is so then the ridge is forced farther south over the southern part of Canada and the northern United States Great Lakes and New England region and if you get high pressure here then you're directing storms they tend to come closer to land into the Caribbean or the United States because the high pressure is keeping them from recurving out to sea in recent years we've had a lot of blocking high pressure over the Arctic but it's too far north so you get troughiness developing over the eastern seaboard and therefore it steers all of the storms out to sea with glaring exceptions of Irene and Sandy but the majority of storms have gone out to sea or uh, been close to the eastern seaboard and not really threatened uh, the Caribbean or the rest of the United States coastline that much but this year if we get a pattern like this it's going to turn around and become more like seasons we had in 2008 2005 2004 where we had a lot of storms directed towards land in store of, instead of out to sea and this is concerning and look at the sea surface temperature forecast from the CFS for the same period during the summer. Notice all the warm water in the tropical Atlantic. And uh, this is, again, a positive Atlantic tripod where you have cooler water to the north. And this is so important for an active hurricane season because when you see this, you've got anomalous sinking air due to the cold water here causing air to sink. And then you have net upward motion to its south in the tropics. And this is so important because the upward motion in the tropics feeds off of the sinking air here. It, be it becomes, if you will, a local localized Hadley cell that is stronger than normal which means air is rising in the tropics and sinking in the region of the subject
subtropical high in the mid-latitude Atlantic. So instead of having a ton of weakling storms that develop up here due to warm water in the middle Atlantic and moving out into the north Atlantic, we have a focus of upward motion in the deep tropical breeding grounds where a lot of storms can come out and end up coming from farther south and possibly threatening the Caribbean and the United States, especially if we get a ridging pattern up here. This would be a nasty situation for the summer. And we'll see if this pattern continues on the CFS. The UK Met also shows a similar pattern, and uh, so is the Japanese model uh, in the last month's forecast. We're still waiting for the May forecast update to come out for the North American ensemble systems, the European, the UK Met, and the Japanese. So we will see uh, what they say in this month's update. But recently, they have been trending in the last couple of months towards the pattern I've been warning about um, since mid-March when I released my outlook that this will be an above normal hurricane season, I think 14 to 16 named storms in the Atlantic, perhaps 150% or so above normal ACE, and uh, an above normal chance of U.S. landfalls, uh, uh, calling for three or so hurricane landfalls on the United States coastline. The average, long-term average per year is 1.5, so that's an above average forecast for three. And in general, this is a year I think people have to be very careful in. Every year, of course, everyone should be very careful and prepared. Hopefully everyone is ready and uh, hopefully not too um, spoiled, for lack of a better word, uh, by the seven-year drought we've had in major hurricane landfalls in the United States. Hopefully that streak continues this year, but I think it is more likely to end than continue, unfortunately, this year. But we will see. It is the weather after all, and uh, we will see what happens. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.